Congratulations. The SX-5 is one of the most convenient, easy to use alarm systems you can own. The SX-5 security system is on the leading edge of security technology. Your SX-5 system has several components that you may want to familiarize yourself with. The central processing unit, intrusion sensors, and environmental sensors, touch pads, sirens, central station. I'm New Age Server Alarm and welcome back to Alertic Security. Today will be a demonstration of my SX5 security system. So the SX series of panels came out around 1985 and was very likely the first wireless security system in the industry that was professionally installed. Not like a DIY kit or anything. I mean this was a legitimate security system like it had a dialer in it and everything. So. That's what makes this an industry first. So, these systems came with this rather retro looking keypad, which is actually wireless. I can pick it up off the wall and carry it with me, see? Because this was intended to be a wireless system. You would put your control panel somewhere and then put your keypads and sensors around. They later came out with a wired keypad, which they nicknamed the High Tech Touchpad. And this was the first of a series of very similar looking keypads that lasted well into the late 1990s, with the design being reused on future panels. Here is what the inside of the panel looks like. It's pretty simple, there's not a lot to it. It's a very compact system. The unfortunate part about it being very compact is this is all the space you get for your field wiring, which can be a bit of a challenge for wiring it, but as you can see, I found a way to overcome that challenge. I made what they call a service loop here by coming around the long way. That way I have extra slack in case I need to change something in the future. Just a nice wiring practice. So here's all your terminal blocks. Now one thing of note is that there's no hardwired zones on this panel by default. You got power, you got your battery, you got your keypad bus, your siren outputs, and your phone line. That's really all there is to it. The top of the circuit board has the wireless receiver, and normally there's two antennas jammed at the top, but the way they sit, I can't fit them on this demo board, so I just have them disconnected for now. But right here is your on-off switch that powers the system, and these two dip switches here, switch number one does nothing, but switch number two puts the panel into programming mode, but I'll be showing programming in a later video. Now this small terminal block under here is actually a hardwired input module which allows you to connect hardwired zones to the panel. And that is hiding underneath the motherboard on mounting points that are designed for the purpose. And all my sensors on this demonstration system are hardwired. I don't actually have any wireless ones programmed into it at the moment. And the backup battery is actually behind the motherboard sitting right here. You can see the two terminals for it right there and right there. To change it, you loosen a screw, this plate comes off, and you slide the battery out from behind it. Very clever way of maximizing the amount of space inside the, inside the very small cabinet. As in, that's it. So the way the SX-5 works, which is true for a lot of older IATI panels, is they operated in what they called protection levels. And this system has ten of them. Protection level zero is disarmed. The way you use these systems is you have your wireless keypads, you have your hardwired keypads, and you have the display here. So the only way to know the status of your system is to look at the display on the panel or the display on the hardwired keypad. Or you can listen to the status beeps which you'll be hearing throughout this video. So. The display on the panel tells you quite a bit of information as long as you know how to read it. So these panels had a bit of a learning curve. First you got protection level. 
and this system has 10 production levels and that's basically the current mode the panel is in. Zero is disarmed. Then you have the sensor number display which is currently just two dashes because there are no sensors faulted or in alarm. And the four LEDs to the right of that tell you the status of the sensor. So for example if I were to trip the front door sensor basically open the front door you can see 34 appears on the screen and blinks to let you know that 34 is faulted. At this point the system will not be able to be armed unless you were to reset 34. So if I were to open 40 as well which is the kitchen window you'll see you'll see it now cycles between 34 and 40 indicating those two sensors are faulted. So I'll reset both of those now the panel's back to normal. Like I said, there's 10 modes or protection levels, and as you can see, they are special, which is basically a low level arming mode meant for 24 hour sensors you may not want on all the time. I haven't seen this feature on any other security systems I've encountered, so it's definitely a unique one. The examples given in the installation manual for special is a sensor on a cash box or a safe, something you may not want armed all the time but sometimes you would so that's why they added that it ended up not being very useful so they didn't keep it in future ITI systems next is level 2 which is chime which is pretty self-explanatory it basically just turns on the perimeter sensors but only makes the keypad beep it doesn't do anything else next you've got exterior which is arm stay you've got away which is arm away obviously You've got Silent Away, which system's completely on, but it'll only transmit to the central station. It won't sound the siren. Six is Night, and seven is Instant Night. Now, the difference between these two is Night Mode has an entry delay, but Instant Night does not. And then you've got Phone Test, which pretty much just tells the panel to dial and transmit to the central station to make sure the phone line is working. As you can see, they recommend you test your system weekly, so it's a good thing to do. And number nine is sensor test, which is essentially walk test. So, this was intended to be a wireless system, first of all. So, you would have sensors like these, which is a uh, door window sensor. And as you can see, they look very similar to the newer ITI Interlogix Learn Mode sensors, but the circuit board is completely different on the inside it's actually not compatible with newer ITI systems it only works with the SX series and the original caretaker not the caretaker plus but the original caretaker operating the system is pretty simple to choose the mode you want you first have to enter your passcode which is one two three four and then you choose so let's say you want to arm stay which is exterior one two three four and three as you can see now the protection level display is showing 3 indicating we are in protection level 3 and the system is armed to stay let's say we want to disarm so now we have disarmed we're back on 0 so now let's say you want to bypass something it's pretty simple you enter your code you press bypass and you enter the sensor number so let's say we don't want the kitchen window to be armed so we'll open the kitchen window and as you can see 40 is blinking on the screen now to indicate that it is faulted so normally with ITI systems at this point you pretty much have to try to arm the system if you want to bypass it but the SX5 is different because it'll let you bypass and unbypass in any protection level newer ITI systems are not like this for whatever reason so first we can bypass it And as you can see, the panel indicates 40 is now bypassed. And then, of course, we can unbypass it. And now the system is no longer showing it bypassed, but still showing it faulted. But if you try to arm the system while it's showing bypassed, you're going to get something that ITI calls protest. So, as you can see, the system is currently protesting because sensor 40 is faulted and we can't arm the system with sensor 40 being faulted so you can either reject the protest by disarming or you can accept the protest by pressing bypass 
And as you can see, now we are on production level 4, which is away, with sensor 40 being bypassed. Now these are not auto-restoring sensors. If I were to reset sensor 40, it would not automatically restore, so you have to do it manually. Now, on newer ITI systems, you actually have to disarm before you do this, but on this one, you can actually unbypass. Just like that. And then it becomes able to set the system into alarm, which I will do now. I'm going to regret this if I don't put the hearing correction on. So now the system is in alarm, and the loud piezo you're hearing is actually on the other keypad. But the siren that SX-5s use is actually a piezo siren. So, let's go ahead and disarm that. And it's showing 40 is still faulted. But as you saw, 40 was in alarm and you heard the siren sounding. So I'll go ahead and reset 40. And now it's back to normal. So now, let's try a fire zone. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have been eyeing the very rare Game Boy pull station next to it, and that is actually wired to the panel. Now I will reset the pull station. As you can see, this panel pulls pretty slowly. That took quite a little while before the alarm was actually registered. That's essentially the basics of operating the system. So now I'm going to show the high-tech touchpad. So as you can see, it shows the protection level on the first segment of the display and then a description of what it is. So like before, if we arm to away, it says OK to exit now, and then you. And now it says away. And, of course, disarm. Now if we trip one of the sensors, like before the CPU displays 34, but on the keypad the, it, the number is blinking, and that indicates that the system is not ready to arm. So to find out what's going on, we press status. As you can see, it's 34 is open. And it goes back to saying disarmed. So if I were to trip the other two sensors, so if I were to trip the other two sensors, you can see the CPU is displaying 34, 40, and 70, while the keypad is also showing the zero. So if I press status again, it says 34. Then it tells you 40. And then it tells you 70. And I love that little animation where it goes away like that. So Turn two of those back off. And now I'll show you what protest does on this keypad. So, as you can see, it's protesting like before, but the keypad is displaying protest. So, you, you can press status to see what is protesting. So, you can see it says kitchen window is in protest. So, like before, bypass to arm. Just like that. Now the display shows different messages for the arming level you're in. Now, the system will let you switch protection levels from any level to another level. You don't have to disarm first. So let's say we want to go to night. It says OK to exit now because night is a delay is a delay mode. Now if we do instant night, it gives you a nice little greeting. Good night! Then of course we got phone test, which I haven't shown yet. This basically causes the panel to dial the central station receiver and make sure that the line is working. So it's currently dialing. As you can see, sensor 83 is in alarm. And essentially what that means is sensors 77 to like 97 or so are what ITI refers to as upper sensor numbers, and these are used to transmit system statuses to the central station. Like a couple examples here is so the system has just completed the phone test. The panel 
or the central station asks the panel to sound the siren for a moment to make sure it's working, and it also sets the clock on the system and gets its current status. So, upper sensor numbers are sensors 77 to 97, and these are used for system statuses instead of alarms or sensors. A couple examples of these are 80, 81, and 82, which are the panic keys, fire, auxiliary, and police. Another example is 90, which occurs if you have a power failure. That one takes about 15 minutes before it actually triggers, though. So, that's pretty much an overview of how the SX-5 works. In the next video I plan to upload on this system, I will demonstrate how programming is done. It's rather interesting compared to most ITI systems. Thank you everybody for watching. I just want to give a quick shout out to Eddie Battaloni, who is the owner of Maddox Security in Las Vegas, Nevada, for saving this system from the trash for me. I'm really glad I was able to get the system because I have been looking for it for years. So, thanks for watching, and please like, comment, and subscribe. Have a nice day!